transportation agencies can predict the impacts of their proposed projects on the environment, traffic patterns, and operations, among others. But until recently, they had no way to predict the safety impacts of their decisions. Okay, people have been thinking about this for a while, but they've been struggling. Well, we've been thinking about safety, but well, how do we... There's been no thing that they can kind of grapple onto and say, aha, now we have a means to go out and really answer these questions. But now it is possible to quantify safety along with other traditional criteria and truly know the safety impact of projects before investing millions of dollars. This new approach is called data-driven safety analysis. Data-driven safety analysis is the application of the latest generation of tools for analyzing crash and roadway data. Many states are using these tools to make more informed project development decisions. This lets them better target highway safety investments and reduce severe crashes on their roadways. And what these states are looking to do is to find a way to incorporate the consideration of safety in some form of a data-driven approach using statistical methods and quantitative analysis within that project development process. The typical transportation project development process includes phases such as planning, alternatives analysis, design, construction, and operation and maintenance. Data-driven safety analysis can be applied early in the planning process to help identify which roadways aren't performing as they should, determine the scope and need of potential projects, and prioritize them. So data-driven safety analysis uh, helps us to look at you know, where are the best places uh, to make those improvements. Uh, the, the analysis process helps us to look at all of those locations and helps us to prioritize where should we uh, focus our, our energies first. Once projects are selected, data-driven tools allow staff to predict the number of severe crashes for multiple alternatives and compare them side by side. If, if we do this design, we can reduce crashes by, let's say, 50%. If we do this other design, we would cr reduce crashes by 30%. And so then they can at least tell the difference. And then they start asking questions, well, why is it like that? You know, and, and the more we learn about it, the better we can be responsive to the public, too. Once an alternative is chosen, designers can use data-driven safety analysis to optimize the investment by customizing design features. We can do our data analysis of not just uh, a broad spectrum, but we can get down to the real details and, uh, and look at fine geometrics, we can look at uh, curves, we can look at types of facilities that are very specific as we're making our decisions. The tools can even be used during construction and maintenance. You know, whether it's construction uh, projects of, of many types, uh, even if it's maintenance work, but it's taking advantage of that time that we're out there to do the most improvements that we can, uh, specifically safety, Many agencies are now incorporating data-driven safety analysis into their policies and procedures. So this is a huge opportunity and this is kind of the vehicle that's helping us get everybody aware that they can make some major safety uh, improvements through all projects, not just the safety projects. The result is a safer system for the traveling public and a step closer to zero deaths on our roadways. Can we reach zero? You know, some people say no way we can't reach it, but why shouldn't we try to reach it? Honestly, I mean, do you want one of the persons that die to be from your family? I don't. I want it to be zero for my family, so why can't it be zero for everybody? So 